factory in Britain. The workers have arranged with their management and their joint production committee to build a bomber in the record time of 30 hours. Another film from the Ministry of Information was made to highlight the need for rapid production. In Workers' Weekend, a construction team from one of the three Vickers factories set themselves a target for producing a fully operational bomber in less than 30 hours. Narrated by an officer of the Royal Canadian Air Force, the film illustrates the effectiveness and simplicity of the geodetic design. Everybody had the feeling? Well, here we go. So we all took a deep breath and got set for 30 hours of non-stop re hard work. The clock strikes nine and the record-breaking attempt begins. Two sections of the fuselage are carried in. The dark girl with the riveter there is Eileen Daphne, who used to work in a rayon factory. One of her brothers was killed in the naval action a little while back. The fuselage parts are assembled in big frames they call jigs. These volunteer workers are giving the bonus they're earning today to the Red Cross Aid to Russia Fund. And they'll have to break that 30-hour record they've set themselves. You can get some idea now of the size of the bomber. It's almost 65 feet long. Here is Evelyn Coates, an inspectress who used to work in a draper's shop. She told me at this point that she had found no faults at all. The workers were not only doing the job fast, but their work is perfect, too. Across the factory in the wing assembly, there is more activity under the evil eyes of the inspectors. Though you may not think they're working fast, as long as they are making space for itself. And it's only 10 o'clock, one hour from the starting time. Miss Wally and Hilda Dodd are doing a man's job of work, assembling the bomber's cabin heater. Back in the main assembly, the wooden floor is fitted to the fuselage. Notice how everything fits with precision. There's no bullying the parts together. One fits willingly with the other. The forward bulkhead frame goes in, and then the pilot's seat, control column, and the cockpit floor all in one unit. And how's the time going? Well, they've been working one hour and 17 minutes. Testing the flaps on the wings is Eva Williams, a nurse by profession, testing fractures in tubes instead of in bones. There's our chief cameraman, Chick Fowl, trying to keep up with the work. The short dark girl assembling the ailerons is 23-year-old Evelyn Holmwood, whose husband is in the Royal Air Force. She was one of the first five women to work in this plant. At 10.27, the foreman gives the word, and into the framework of the aircraft pile the electrical workers, armed with the tricks and the tools of their intricate trade. One of the company test pilots, Gerald Winnie, he was in the Royal Air Force in France before Dunkirk, stood beside me and said ruefully, like a lot of bloody ants, Hope they don't forget anything. But he had nothing to worry about. Construction went on, and the inspectors beamed with satisfaction. As you see, it seems to be a welder of wires, pipes, workers, shoes. Four great sections which give the bomber its 80-foot wingspan are now being covered with fabric. Flashing fingers and winking needles. One wrong move, the needle would hit metal and the point would break. Agatha Hobson and the others who work here know where the stitches go. The fabric is bonded to the metal frame by about 8,000 tiny bolts, and stitches tidy up the edges. Eight stitches to the inch, and that's a whole lot of sewing you're looking at. Back at the fuselage, out of the tail, Vera Butler and her sister Joan work together all the time. Vera was a lady's companion before she started building bombers two years ago. This is Phyllis Evans, who was in service as a maid before the war. She's one of them fitting the fabric covering over the plate line. And here is the process of weatherproofing and strengthening the fabric. The grayish white material changes to dull red as the dope goes on. Nine coats are applied, but it's right.